All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And as you see behind me, we live in luxury right now. That's an Atlanta insider. Shouts out to OG Double D, man. That's a super duper insider. But either way, man, we live in luxury right now, man. I'm super excited. This is going to be one of the most exciting videos for me because I love the potential head coaches we're going to get. But getting the GM head of football operations part right is so much more important than getting the head coach right because i feel like the dominoes will just fall in place so y'all saw the excitement i had with the potential head coaching candidates that we're bringing in for interviews i'm super excited about these gm candidate interviews that we're doing because first of all some of these are scheduled the head coaches ones we've requested to interview these guys but we don't know when they'll happen or even if they'll happen some of these ones especially some of these top guys that we're going to talk about in this video not only have we requested to interview them they're willing to do the interview they want to do the interview and they're already scheduled some are taking place today some are taking place tomorrow and we'll discuss which other ones are actually coming up probably later on as well and we're going to break it down like that too we're going to break down the potential gm candidates that are literally coming in today they probably already started while i'm talking right now recording this video at 4 17 p.m and then we have some tomorrow, so on and so forth. I'm super excited. And the reason I have this background behind me is because this is Josh Harris's mansion. He's bringing these people in person to come to talk to him in front of the League of Heroes. I'm going to keep calling them the League of Heroes. When I say that, I'm referring to all of these guys we have in the front office that are helping Josh Harris with this GM head coaching search and all of that type of stuff. Some of the most notable names, we have Glenn Cook from Cleveland. Ian Cunningham from Chicago, Mike Braganzi from Kansas City, Adam Peters from San Francisco, Alec Hallaby from Philadelphia, and Will Clay from Dallas. We got to talk about all of those guys in this video because at the very least, there's interest in those guys and we have requested the interview at all of them. But only some of them, the majority of them, we actually have interviews literally scheduled, set in stone. Let's get it done. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned because I'm updating y'all on everything that's going on. Every small, minute detail that maybe even a lot of y'all think is pointless to even discuss. I'm breaking down everything, every step of the way. Even if it's rumors, we'll discuss those reports, strong sources, anything. We're talking and breaking down everything commanders. Again, it's to the point that I got to do like two, three videos a day. And just because the regular season ended does not mean my live streams have ended. I will continue to hold live streams call-in shows most notably where you yeah you that's literally watching this video right now can call in and voice your opinions on a lot of things as far as gm candidates head coaching candidates free agency draft all of that man i'm super excited make sure y'all stay tuned for all of that but let's go ahead and get to this video right now let's get it live in luxury yeah we live in luxury yeah All right, so first of all, before we even dive into all of these potential head of football operations or GMs, whatever we want to call them, positions, all of these candidates that we're diving into, I love the fact that Josh Harris is not only has his own league of heroes to help him in this search process, but I also love that he's doing all of this in Miami. Butter him up, sell them on a vision of what the commanders will look like rather than what the current facilities and stadium in Virginia and Maryland currently look like. Because look at this, man. Look at this right here. Look at this picture right here. This is the one that's in my background right now. Would you prefer to be interviewed here or here? Look at that. Look at that. Is that a foyer? Like, what, what do we call that? That is a lobby? That's a courtyard? That, that looks like a dictatorship level courtyard right there. Like, come on, man. And then even this angle right here. Like, what is this? Look at the inside. Look at the inside, man. Would you prefer to have your interview in here? Or would you prefer to have your interview here at these Virginia facilities? How y'all feeling about that? Or matter of fact, forget that. How about we do it at the FedEx Field Stadium? 
Matter of fact, in the parking lot, how do you feel about this view in comparison? Like, come on, dog. It's obvious, man. Josh Harris knows what he's doing, man. First of all, there's a reason he bought a house in Miami, even though he owns teams in Philadelphia and the DMV. There's a reason for that, just plain and simple, why he preferred to make that move. And then there's also a clear deliberate reason that he's bringing people to miami to talk to him rather than bringing everybody to the dmv area where they're actually going to conduct business and do what they got to do and put their talents to work there's a reason man. he's buttering them up and he's trying to show them a night out and basically sell them on the vision of what the commanders could potentially look like with a new stadium new facilities it's going to be luxurious like this right here rather than what we currently have right now of course we've all looked at the different stadium concepts that are coming different facilities for when we finally make a move to a new stadium potentially in 2027 probably at the soonest and things like that and i think it's really the aesthetic of that like we could be living like this i know what it looks like right now but we can be living like this it's really kind of like a big metaphor to be completely honest and i'm down for it. whatever it takes i'm pretty sure these guys are going to be sold on football as a priority and some of these guys may be just sold on the football side of it only all this miami stuff doesn't matter at all but i'll take whatever little bit of help we can get to potentially get one of these top candidates also i like the fact that we're trying to do these dinner meetings in the evening or night rather than being lunch meetings i don't know it's just something like a better look to it bringing these guys in, in the evening and night and like really like doing the meeting the right way with the right aesthetic rather than doing it at lunch just any old place because i know a lot of y'all have pulled that move to save money y'all not low dog y'all not low i know a lot of y'all done pulled that move there's a difference between lunch and dinner when you're trying to impress somebody you know what i'm saying so shouts out to josh harris for doing this the right way and also john com reported in his podcast he said quote it wouldn't shock me at all if you have a president of football ops within a week or so, unquote, which means we're moving. We are moving. And also, I want to point out the fact that he said president of football operations and not necessarily like a GM. They'll probably have a bigger title than that. But I love the fact that we are moving. This could go down within a week because there are no I already broke down the rules, the NFL rules as to when and how we could interview potential head coaching candidates and there's a lot of different things like is the team already out of the playoffs are they a wild card team are they going to the divisional round it's so many rules and stipulations there are so many different steps but potential gms we're going right now there's no rules in the way right now that's stopping us from interviewing these guys. And again, John Com has already said with the way that Josh Harris is moving with his press conference and everything he said, and I'm doing an entire video breakdown in this press conference and why you should be super excited about certain things that Josh Harris said. We are hitting the ground running and we are going to probably have a president of football operations, GM, whatever you want to call them, in office immediately and then we can go ahead and start to work on what our head coach will be and then from there everything else will fall into place defensive coordinator offensive coordinator all of that type of stuff we'll see how that goes and i'm pretty sure they're gonna let the the head of football operations do all of the work pretty much under him like as far as the head coach i'm pretty sure he's gonna have the majority of the say he may not have all of it but i'm pretty sure whoever we hire out of these potential candidates that i'm we're gonna talk about in this video is gonna probably have the most power and say so who we bring in as head coach and of course that guy in the head coach will probably collaborate to bring in defensive coordinator offensive coordinator and so on and so forth all the way down and they'll work together to build this team and make them a better product on the field and potentially a Super Bowl contender, I'm hoping. But it's really interesting, though, because with one of these guys being ahead of football operations, is there a chance that we could still bring in a GM to work under them? Is there a chance that we can maybe combine two of these guys that we're going to talk about in this video? One guy come in as head of football operations, another guy become a GM? Because that's still technically a promotion. Going from most of these guys are assistant GMs, you go up to GM straight up gm and then the other guys had a football operations maybe not necessarily sure kind of actually doubt it which we'll talk about later but it's really interesting now let's get to the guys that we're interviewing today first of all the first name i saw was chief's assistant gm mike baganzi he's the first one that we will be interviewing he's been a top lieutenant for gm brett veach during their run for the kansas city chiefs he's a highly ranking football executive super excited about him man and it's crazy because he may be my least favorite candidate that we're going to talk about today well probably least favorite second only to 
the Cowboys candidate we're going to talk about later. But he's still a great candidate. Like, everybody on this list, let me go ahead and get this out the way. Even though he's probably one of my least favorite candidates, I'm saying least favorite and not worst for a reason. I'm wording it like that. Pay attention to the diction because all of these guys are great candidates. Every single person we talk about in this video, if we end up hiring them as the guy, we should be doing backflips and should be very excited. For if anything, if Mike Braganzi beats out Adam Peters, Ian Cunningham, Alec Hallaby for the job. That means he has a crazy vision. I feel like you should just win in doubt, give this next regime the benefit of the doubt. But also, to my point, that as much as I love Adam Peters, Ian Cunningham, and, and Alec Hallaby as potentially my three top candidates, probably Adam Peters is my personal number one candidate. If Mike Braganzi beats out those guys, that means he's the truth. Like, he must have came in that interview and killed it, sold him on a crazy vision, and is ready to put in the work. But even ignoring that, even if Mike Braganzi was the only candidate and we ended up hiring him, I'm still really excited about him, man. 15 seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs, the number two behind Brett Beach, former director of football operations and player personnel, helped draft the 2022 class. He was a big role in drafting Isaiah Pacheco, Trent McDuffie, um, Carlofidis, over there as well that whole class he's been in kansas city the entire time pat mahomes has been there he was there before pat mahomes got there this guy has been a strong reason why the kansas city chiefs has been winning super bowls shouts out to albert breer for this background on mike braganzi as well he said braganzi has been gm and brett veach's number two for seven seasons and has seven division titles three afc championships and two lombardi trophies two super bowls one over that small not very long span of time he was initially hired in kansas city in 2009 by piali which gave him four years in page in a patriot style program before andy reed arrived in 13. he's done just about everything in his time and as a result the former ivy league fullback is about as well-rounded and ready candidate as you'll find i mean you could argue that mike Braganzi is probably the most well-rounded guy the guy that's had his hands in as many different aspects as far as building and running a team when it comes to like experience and adaptability again going from a Patriots Bill Belichick style of running an organization to what he's doing for the Kansas City Chiefs seeing the best of both worlds I mean you could argue he's one of the best candidates just off of how adaptable he is no matter the situation if you need him to do scouting film session maybe even some analytics this is a guy that you can argue is like the jack of all trades out of all of the candidates so i'm super excited about him as well i don't think he has an area of weakness now you could argue that adam peters is maybe better than him at one thing like ian cunningham is probably better than him at scouting and film watching and player evaluations and things like that you could argue alec hallaby is definitely the better analytics guy the better numbers cruncher but again mike braganzi do not sleep on him we're gonna talk about a lot of these other candidates and i'm gonna probably hype them up even more because they're my favorites but we're not gonna sleep on mike braganzi he has no weakness to his game which you can argue some of the other candidates even though they're elite at certain things they may have that one weakness or that one kind of unknown we're not sure if they're great at that one thing and we're gonna acknowledge that when it comes to some of these guys mike braganzi has no weakness and he's ready to go and Moving on to the next candidate is Mike Bagazzi is walking out of the door and leaving the mansion premises. You have Adam Peters who will be giving him a head nod as he walks by and enters the mansion because Adam Peters is also being interviewed tonight. 49ers assistant GM Adam Peters will interview for the commander's head of football operations job tonight in Miami. The Raiders and Chargers also requested permission to interview Peters for the GM jobs, but we have not heard anything about him scheduling that meeting at all for those guys and he's already turned down previous meetings for other teams as well so far the only team he's willing to interview with as of 4 30 p.m on january 9th are the commanders that's it and he's gonna meet in front of the league of heroes as well he's one of the most sought after gm names out there and he turned down like i briefly just foreshadow he turned out interviews with the Titan titans and the cardinals last year and then again so far this year the raiders and chargers have requested permission but he went ahead and scheduled ours 
first i feel like that's very significant and the reason that he may prefer us first of all and at the end of the video we're going to talk about what this team has to offer a potential next head of football operations and gm as far as draft capital cap space all of that type of stuff but also the connections because he went to ucla with recently hired bob myers who's here to basically be like the lead consultant for how josh harris to build this team he's he's part of the league of heroes who's going to be interviewing the potential um head operations guys gm candidates like at adam peters and again once we pick that guy that guy who, who we're talking about adam peters could potentially be is going to be the guy that picks a lot of the other stuff like head coach and stuff like that bob myers rick spillman are here to advise to find that right guy and then that guy will handle all of the football stuff but going back to adam peters 20 plus seasons of nfl experience different type of guy three-time super bowl champion and also former director of college scouting this guy can do just about everything when it comes to evaluating talent you can argue he's the best in the business he's arguably my number one candidate i'm still a little shaky on announcing exactly who my number one is it's kind of like a 1a 1b and 1c i don't really have a one two and three but adam peters is probably that 1a at worst 1b he's my guy and also why i feel like adam peters will be a home run hire is fairly obvious in my opinion like i mean i feel like we should kind of know just based off of what he's done for the 49ers i don't even feel like i really need to dive into too much detail here i mean just look at the draft picks look at the free agency moves look at the trades they've done including the one for christian mccaffrey that a lot of people questioned and said that they sold the bag now look at them and even though i don't think brock purdy is anywhere near as good as people make him out to be talking about him being an mvp candidate and stuff like that it's still impressive to still find somebody who can drive this elite sports car in a straight line down the road don't derail don't fall off the tracks or anything and you found that guy in the seventh round literally the last pick of the draft that's still amazing talk about Brock Purdy all you want good or bad to find a guy that's the starting quarterback for one of the best teams in the NFL right now last pick of the draft and it's not even like he's just this super season veteran he's in what like his second or third year second like it's not even like this guy has been here forever and that's like a reason for it no this they th the talent evaluation is incredible it's absolutely incredible Kyle Shanahan deserves a lot of credit a lot of guys deserve a lot of credit of course the the 49ers actual GM deserves a lot of credit but Adam Peters as an assistant GM I'm telling y'all dog don't sleep on him at all man the way the 49ers got this this whole thing going right now this elite sports car they have adam peters has played a large role into that and don't even get me started on all of the pro bowlers and all pros they have up and down that roster that make up that elite sports car that again brock purdy you just simply have to keep it on the road in a straight line you don't have to do too much and it's crazy too because brock purdy he's game manager by like talent but play style wise he's actually he's actually a really big risk taker it's actually really weird um but i'm pretty sure the 49ers get headaches watching him play because i'm sure they like him but that guy is willing to take some risk and with an elite team like that i, I could see why a lot of 49ers fans would prefer for him not to take as many risks but that's just me going on a random tangent it doesn't really have much to do with adam peters but also i feel like the best way to win over adam peters is to give him the exact same power that his dog current 49ers gm and complete dictatorship over everything that's going on nobody moves without john lynch's permission nobody blinks a breeze without john lynch's permission how about the commanders extend adam peters that same exact title and amount of power just go ahead and let him do it let him be the president of football operations slash gm and then just like john lynch let him pick his own assistant gm the next adam peters you know i i would definitely do exactly what the 49ers are doing to john lynch and would allow adam peters to come up as an assistant gm let if he wants to do that here let him I, I mean hey go ahead and just give him the keys i think that will make us an even more attractive destination for him already more than he is again the fact that he's turned down previous job offers and interviews last year from teams and then this year out of the several teams that have offered him and requested his interviews we're the only ones he's talked to and he's already on it like i think the re re the request was yesterday and he's meeting tonight like he was like hey man i'm ex i'm just as excited as y'all if we end up not picking him i don't think it's because he doesn't want to come to us i think it's because we ended up choosing somebody else i think we're very likely to get him if we want him and so I again by title with head of football operations it, it sounds like he's gonna have a lot of power if we end up actually 
hiring him, and I'm super excited about that, man. I'm super duper excited. Now moving on, somebody else that's being interviewed today. We have Glenn Cook from the Cleveland Browns, their assistant GM. That's three candidates today alone. That is crazy, man. And look at the Browns. Look at them. What more do I need to say? Look at, I mean, they have a really bad quarterback situation. It's still one of the scariest teams in the playoffs right now. They're still one of the scariest teams. That's incredible. In a QB-led NFL era that we're in right now, in a passing league, the Browns are firmly in the playoffs and have impressive wins against good teams with Joe Flacco at quarterback. He's 36! I mean, well, technically he's actually 38. But come on, dog. Like, he's coming straight from the couch, man. And I'm not even about to sit here and act like Joe Flacco has just been terrible. I mean, he's been at the very least better than Deshaun Watson since he's gotten here. He's actually been pretty good. But the way that they built that roster top to bottom, I mean, the fact that they built that team great enough to where they can carry this Browns quarterback room to a fifth seed spot in the incredibly competitive AFC right now. Imagine what he can do with a second overall pick and potentially having the power to get an elite quarterback and how he could build that roster top to bottom with a way better quarterback room than what he's dealing with for the Browns right now. Do not sleep on Glenn Cook, y'all. I know guys like Adam... Peters and Alec Halabini and Cunningham are the more notable names, but Glenn Cook will be a great hire as well. That's my main point about this video, that don't sleep on Mike Braganzi, do not sleep on Glenn Cook. I feel like both of those guys are flying way too far under the radar right now. Commanders fans should be excited if we get either of those guys it's not just the adam peters ian cunningham alec hallaby sh um, show do not sleep on glenn cook and remember so far everybody we've talked to is being interviewed today as in tuesday january 9th we are moving do not sleep again on glenn cook now I, and I'm not, I don't want to spend too much time talking about him because we're about to be here for basically like an hour if I do, giving everybody like their own 10, 15 minutes. But moving on to Wednesday, who will be interviewed, who's already confirmed to be interviewed tomorrow as in January 10th, we have GM, assistant GM from the Eagles, Alec Hallaby, scheduled, not requested, scheduled. You can tell we got something different going on if all of these elite GM candidates are not only wanting to be interviewed by us and like actually doing it, going through with it and actually interested. I mean, because they can turn these down again. Adam Peters have turned them down. Pretty sure Alec Hallaby has turned down some. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. It's, it's also how quick they are on it. I mean, Adam Peters, Glenn Cook, Mike Braganzi one day, Alec Hallaby, and we're going to talk about Ian Cunningham a little, a little bit later after we talk about Alec Hallaby the next day. Like, they're not even worried about, like, ego-wise, like, no, nah, I need the red carpet. You only interview me today, that's it. I'm not about to interview with other GM candidates in the same day, back to back to back. We're passing by each other. Him coming in, I'm leaving type of thing. There's no ego involved. These guys are almost, like, I told y'all weeks ago. And even after ESPN ranked us the seventh best head coaching um job landing spot and gm landing spot and all that type of stuff i completely disagreed and i gave you my points while we're going to talk about a lot of those points later in the video after we get through these gms but i told y'all that we were going to be a highly sought after place for a lot of elite minds whether it's gm head coach offensive coordinator what we have to offer as far as just capital to turn to to truly build a team the right way nobody else is doing it like us either we have more draft capital than everybody else or we have literally the number one cap space more cap space and flexibility to do what you need to do in free agency than everybody else i mean again dmv is a top five market that's super slept on it just doesn't feel like it because the basketball and football teams have just been so average and bad so long you just dmv should literally be up there with atlanta la new york houston miami chicago literally should be but it just doesn't feel like it but they the sleeping giant is there the fan base is there all of that and so i just want to keep emphasizing that with how quickly we're getting these gm interviews there where again where there's an adam peters who hasn't even confirmed if he even wants to interview with those other teams he wants to talk to us first before he even thinks about potentially interviewing with other teams and how quickly we're getting these guys in and out of the building in miami Miami, Josh Harris's mansion, which you see behind me still, to come in for these interviews, it seems like to me, I don't know what other teams have going on behind the scenes, maybe it's not being reported, but it sounds like we're the team that all of these elite minds, 
all of these front office guys, even maybe potentially head coaches, are we're the number one landing spot right now, at the very least for GM. And if we get GM right, maybe that automatically makes us the number one landing spot for an elite head coach as well. Uh, young offensive minded guy, defensive minded. I know I just went on a rant in the middle of Alec Hallaby's section, but I just feel like that's significant. I mean, I wasn't even sure days ago that we would even get an interview from Adam Peters or Alec Hallaby or Ian Cunningham. Not only are we getting them, we're getting them back to back to back. Like, Josh Harris is barely even going to have time to sleep. Bob Myers, Rick Spielman, Martin Mayhew, Marty Herney, all of these guys are just constantly on the clock interviewing the top guys. Not just any guys, the top guys, man. And again, the fact that there's no ego involved, even if there is some slight ego there, we're just not seeing the fact that these guys are willing to put that to the side because the commanders are that attractive of a destination for these elite minds. I'm super excited, man. I don't see how y'all can't be extremely optimistic about what we have going on. It seems like we're doing everything the right way, and they're already exceeding my expectations in every way possible. Now back to Alec Hallaby. First of all, he's very intriguing because he's 36 years old. He's like a young prodigy guy. He's basically like the Ben Johnson or the Bobby Slowick of GM candidates. Um, he's ex I'm super interested in his potential. He's Mr. Analytics. If you want to go analytics... Like Josh Harris has been screaming, he's that guy. But just to break it down before we super dive into him, 36 years old, still has 16 years of NFL experience. He started at 20. He's an analytical genius. He's a Harvard graduate. Those connections are going to matter. We're going to talk about soon. Eagles vice president of football operations and strategy from 2016 to 2021. And then as of 2022 till now, he's been the Eagles assistant GM and there's no way he's not at least one of your top three candidates. There's just no way. You can't miss right now. With all of these guys we're interviewing, you can't miss. But this guy is arguably the top of the top. It's crazy. And again, like other GM candidates or head coaching candidates that are usually unusually young, there is a strong reason they were able to rise through the ranks so quickly. Like There's a reason this guy is only 36 and already has this much power and by the age of 37 he could potentially be the head of football operations or the gm of an organization of a professional nfl football team like that there's something to that y'all the sean mcveighs the kyle shanahan's the bobby slowicks the ben johnson's there the even mike Mc, mcdonald over there for the ravens as a defensive coordinator there's something to these young guys man these are the type of guys that are like basically the next wave. And of course, you are sacrificing some experience when it comes to these guys. Even though he has been around for 16 years in the NFL, when you're talking about a 36-year-old versus like a 50-year-old, there's still like an experience gap. But I'm not worried about it because the potential is unlimited. And when it comes to experience, uh, you could argue it's overrated. But also, when it comes to experience, this guy has that. Now, maybe he doesn't have as many years, but when it comes to like actual putting in work and results, getting results, this guy is in there, man. Look at how the Eagles have built their team through the draft, through free agency, how aggressive they are in free agency, the blockbuster trades. And of course, I'm biased as a UGA fan because anybody that makes it more likely for me to get any Bulldogs, not even more Bulldogs. How about we just get one Bulldog on my commanders? I would love it if my favorite college team players were getting drafted by my favorite nfl team so i'm biased there of course but even ignoring that man this guy definitely gets one of my top votes bias included bias not included whatever way i mean because again i know the eagle sports car look great at first wheels are starting to fall off a little bit lately you know they got that same kind of sports car that the 49ers have but their wheels have just fallen off recently for some crazy reason it's actually really weird losing to the cardinals and the giants back to back is insane they're like one and four in the last five games it's incredible how bad but at the very least the off seasons that the eagles have had these past couple of years have had me so jealous over here as a commanders fan i'm not even gonna sit here and lie with all of the trades and free agency signings that they make left and right I mean, they have Sha Shaquille Leonard right now. Like, that's it. If you would have told me the Eagles somehow found a way to get Shaquille Leonard two years ago, I would have thought you was playing around. I would have thought you were trolling. I would have thought you was flat out lying. Like, the moves they make to make their team better, they're willing to do whatever it takes. And at the same time, their cap management isn't even terrible. They're not even as much in the negative in cap space going into this 2024 offseason as the Chargers are. 
They've made all of these moves and they're still 18th in the NFL in cap space at $28 million available next year. You got teams like the Saints that are negative 75, the Dolphins negative 43, the Bills negative 41, the Chargers negative 34, Broncos negative 19, Browns negative 12, Cowboys negative 11, and Pittsburgh Steelers negative 6. And then you have the San Francisco 49ers, they're in the positive. But they're only they're less than one million in the positive. They have a eight hundred seventy nine thousand dollars worth of cap space going into this next offseason. Somehow the Eagles have far more money than any of those teams combined in cap space, even after all of the trades they've made, all of the free agency signings, the big signings they've done to go get elite players at their respective positions. Now, injuries have hurt them a little bit, and that's not Alec Hallaby's fault. But you also got to remember, these guys were just at the Super Bowl last year, and not only were they in it, it looked like they were going to win it for a long time until the, the Chiefs, Pat Mahomes, and those guys pulled a, a rabbit out of the hat and somehow found a way to win that game at the end and then also let's talk about connections to Alex Hallaby because remember Josh Harris owns the neighboring team in Philadelphia the 76ers Alex Hallaby works for the Eagles they've definitely interacted a lot just because of that alone but even deeper than that and more meaningful than that my guy Eugene Shin newly hired commander's svp of football strategy yes sir that's my dog and hallaby attend the same analytics conference every year and then on top of that like i mentioned earlier alec hallaby graduated from harvard guess who else went to harvard eugene shin who's gonna have a lot of say so and what goes on around this team both personnel and on the field wise do we go forward on fourth down do we prioritize tight end in the draft what about free agent contracts do we do we prioritize running back and free agency or the draft eugene shin has that level of influence and power and decision making under josh harris went to harvard with oh at, well same school not at the same time but same school as alec hallaby and they also go to the same analytics conference but guess who else went to harvard josh harris come on dog the connection there is too strong right there man i wouldn't be surprised if josh harris doesn't hire alec hallaby just off of the harvard connection right there the the three guys right there the three amigos and eugene shin josh harris and alec hallaby to basically complete the the harvard power rangers basically also josh harris has been doing everything possible to turn the commanders into an analytics dynasty and to turn the commanders into the basically the biggest analytical juggernaut in the nfl and when it comes to analytics probably doesn't get any better than alec hallaby like he's a genius he's this prodigy in a lot of different ways but probably the thing he's the most elite at and you could argue the thing that he's better at than anybody else we're going to talk about in this video is analytics howie roseman is great he's ali um howie roseman's um prod protege he's his little prodigy right under him and things like that uh, and you can argue Howie Roseman is the best GM in the entire NFL. But Alec Hallaby being his right-hand man, again, his little protege right under him, the next prodigy in the NFL, he's the numbers guy to this whole Howie Roseman operation. I know if it were up to Josh Harris alone, which I'm glad it isn't. I'm glad we have a whole basically committee and, and council right here. Like, again, the League of Heroes to decide who this guy will be. But if it were up to Josh Harris alone, I would be very surprised if Alec Hallaby wouldn't have been the guy. He probably would have been hired as of yesterday. Probably his interview would have just been, hey, hello, you got the job and that's it type of thing. If it was just up to Josh Harris alone and that's it. Also, at the same time, though, something to think about. Would they prefer a guy like Ian Cunningham, who's more of the film and scouting based, and, and over bringing in another analytics guy? Because if you hire Alec Hallaby, even as much as I want him, and I would love to get him, and if we ended up getting him, I'm still doing backflips. I'm flipping tables. He's a top three candidate for a reason, arguably one or two for different reasons. Wouldn't we want a guy that specifically specializes in like film and scouting? Because unless they hire another front office guy with a different title and some different power, maybe an assistant GM, I guess, like I mentioned earlier, maybe we could do that. Who knows? But with Eugene Shin already here as the analytics guy, you bring in your president of football operations slash GM to be another analytics guy who's watching the film, who's doing the scouting. Again, just something to think about. Is it too much analytics and not enough actual football and X's and O's going around? Again, I'm still super down for it. I trust whatever the League of Heroes decides to do. But it's just something to keep in the back of your mind. Do we want to go strong, just super analytics and that's it? 
and figure out the scouting and, and, and film watching and all of that stuff through another guy that we bring in potentially. We'll see. Now, moving on, speaking of Ian Cunningham, because I didn't mention his name for no reason, he's also scheduled to be interviewed tomorrow. I'm super excited, man. He will interview with the Commanders Wednesdays in January 10th. Again, this is not a request. This is not a hope. This is he's coming in for an interview to Miami to what you see behind him. He's walking in there tomorrow, what you see behind me, man. And so super excited. First of all, he graduated from the University of Virginia, and I think he's technically from Texas as far as like where he was raised and stuff, high school and all of that. But he went to the University of Virginia, and that's still pretty cool. He, he's familiar with the air, area. Also, speaking of young minds, he may not be the youngest out of this group, but he's still only 39. Still one of those young prodigy type of guys potentially if you want to count him as that also he was a finalist for the titans gm job last offseason but that went to Rand carthen and i mean we'll see how that's working out for the titans right now and then he also reportedly turned down the cardinals gm job last year didn't want it and then now he's coming in for an interview with us so it seems like he's more interested in us than he was for the cardinals last year and it looks like he probably dodged the bullet well but we'll see how that goes also ian cunningham's connections are really interesting as well because eugene shin was there with them in baltimore for like a year at least one year with ian cunningham there even though he wasn't like an assistant gm or anything he was still there and at the same time ian cunningham was an area scout for the ravens while mike mcdonald worked his way up from coaching intern to defensive assistant to defensive backs coach before he went to michigan and created that elite defense and then came back to the ravens as a defensive coordinator and coached them to having the best defense in the nfl so him and ian cunningham mike mcdonald and ian cunningham crossed paths for several years working together for the ravens again for multiple years in a row consecutively so if you're the type that wants another prodigy and like a mike mcdonald but like a defensive version of it Ian Cunningham is probably your guy because he'll probably vouch for Mike McDonald. If you really want Mike McDonald, Ian Cunningham is probably the guy that helps increase your chances of getting that guy. And But even just besides that, even just ignoring his connections and how he could potentially sway Mike McDonald to come this way, even just him standing alone, his work and talent speaks for itself, man. He was handpicked by the great, the genius, Ozzie Newsom, Newsom himself for a reason. Like, handpicked, Ozzie Newsome went and got this guy and was like, please come over here and help me with, with what I got going on for the Bears right now for a really good reason. And I'm sure he played a strong role in the way that the Bears finessed the Panthers out of the draft picks and players that they got and how intentional they've been about fixing the linebacker position and how they've done everything they can to build around Justin Fields this season. It sucks Justin Fields got hurt, but... I mean, I felt like they did a pretty good job giving, doing what they could do within a year of time, one offseason, one free agency, one draft, to do what they could to build around him this offseason. Because with as much as people think that the Bears should trade away Justin Fields and move on from him, they still managed to beat the Lions once and should have beat him a second time if it weren't for Ben Johnson looking like the smartest defensive coordinator in the NFL for the last four minutes in that game, putting together two legendary drives to win that game. And Bears should have beat the Lions twice. And they so they've managed to get some really impressive wins and put up some really impressive games this season. I mean, us Commanders fans know, we know. We know how the Bears get. And the way that team is built from top to bottom is really the biggest reason. I, I think that boy Ian Cunningham had a lot to deal with that. I mean, again, just how they did everything they could to give Justin Fields weapons. They looked at the situation and was like, man, Justin Fields needs a, some weapons in the O-line. And in the same offseason, one singular offseason, they traded for DJ Moore and drafted Darnell Wright along with some other moves, man. I respect it. Now, one thing interesting about Ian Cunningham, this has nothing to deal with us, but if he joins another organization as a GM, the Bears will receive compensation as part of the Rooney Rooney. Rule. If a team loses a minority executive or coach to another team, that team will receive a third round compensatory pick for two years. That's really interesting. So that's something really doesn't have much to deal with us, but I just wanted to go ahead and throw that out there. And so Ian Cunningham, again, him, Alec Hallaby, and Adam Peters are my top three candidates for reasons I've already explained. Now, when it comes to guys that we have requested interviews for, but we don't have a confirmed date of when they will come in for an interview, we have Will McClay, the vice president of player personnel for the Cowboys right now. Really interesting, man. That's 
That's very, very interesting. I mean, Jerry Jones loves that guy. I highly doubt Jerry Jones lets that guy leave. We requested that interview. I wouldn't be surprised if Jerry Jones comes in and shuts that down himself because the Cowboys have put together a pretty good roster. The Cowboys are always consistently one of the more talented teams in the NFL. I don't believe it's Will McClay's fault that they always find a way to fold in January. I feel like he's been doing his job. So that's another guy right there from the Cowboys. I know as is Burgundy and Gold fans, we don't like to take people from the Cowboys, but that's one right there that we would actually benefit strongly from because it would be it would work it would be working our favor two ways we'd be taking away a great mind from the cowboys still in one away he'd be leaving them and then also we'd be getting him and adding them to our team so he's not one of my top five top three candidates but if we were to end up hiring that guy even though we don't even have an interview set right now so who knows if we even get a chance to interview him again i wouldn't be surprised if jerry jones shuts that down but if somehow we ended up getting will mcclay as our president of football operations gm whatever we should be excited about that as well there's nobody in this video that i've mentioned that we've requested interviews for that is any slouch in any way there's tears there's guys that are better than others overall and at specific things but nobody's just bad now also i want to just go ahead and update y'all on what we've done so far so far as far as interview requests go you have glenn cook of cleveland ian cunningham of chicago mike braganzi of kansas city adam peters of san francisco alec hallaby of philadelphia and will mcclay of dallas just to do a quick review but also while we're here and talking about it let's talk about the head coaches we've requested to interview none of which we have a confirmed interview again i did a full breakdown of the nfl rules and how that goes in my previous video where i talked about us one in the interview bobby slowick dan quinn and mike mcdonald but just to update you on that list we have raheem morris defensive coordinator from the rams you have anthony weaver from the ravens you have ben johnson offensive coordinator from the detroit lions aaron glenn de defensive coordinator from the detroit lions mike mcdonald defensive coordinator of the baltimore ravens bobby slowick the offensive coordinator for the houston texans and dan quinn the defensive coordinator for the dallas cowboys and i also just want to remind y'all that these interviews are all happening in person in the setting right behind me face to face they have to walk into a dark room just just picture this dark room bright light flashing on you you're the only source of light in that room shining down straight to your face and then there's a bunch of dark figures behind really high desks surrounding you basically interviewing you like that i don't know if y'all seen the atlanta episode where they, they were trying to judge whether you were black or white but i'm i'm picturing it looks something similar to that some like illuminati meeting looking stuff hey, hey i'm all down for it man i know i'm making all of this up but i'm just having fun that's what i picture in my head that's why i keep calling on them the league of heroes and when i say the league of heroes just to confirm just to update y'all just to reiterate i'm talking about josh harris the owner eugene shin svp of everything analytics going on with this team bob myers the lead consultant for bringing for building this organization the right way and making the right hires rick spillman basically doing the same thing reaching out to agents and doing all of that type of stuff marty herney is still here and then you also have martin mayhew that's a part of it i believe at very least martin mayhew was gone once we hire the next gm head of football operations because they're literally going to be taking his job and also getting more power while they do it and I wouldn't be surprised if Marty Herney is gone as well unless he ends up with some random title where he has like a small slice of power and a little bit of influence and they ask for his opinions on some things. But I, I'm not confident in Marty Herney staying and I'm very confident in Martin Mayhew not staying. And when I say the League of Heroes, love all of these guys. Martin Mayhew is probably more like a mermaid man and barnacle boy when it comes to heroes. But everybody else, they're heavy hitters. Everybody else, we got Batman, Superman, we got somebody from invincible we got somebody from marvel one of them top dogs that's the type of uh people we put together to find the right gm head of football operations head coach whatever you want to call it and also before we get up out of here again josh harris is emphasizing quote this this process will be rapid and thorough unquote so just so you know yeah we're going through these quickly but they're not skipping on efficiency they're not skipping on being thorough just to get these done quickly these are going to be very thorough they're going to be very detailed they are doing real serious interviews right now we just so happen to be running through them as far as getting them scheduled and things like that back to back so don't worry i feel like it's the perfect combination of both it's very fast but it's also very efficient i'm very confident in that also just to give y'all a heads up all of these gm candidates we are looking for are elite at what they do so on one side it's a great thing 
because we're very likely to at least get one of these guys and we'll be very happy with any of these guys i mentioned today but at the same time on the flip side since all of these guys are basically him at, uh, at what they do whether it be one thing or multiple things i don't see a scenario where any of these guys is brought in as like a head of football operations and and, and and then another one of these guys we mentioned in this video also joins as a pair as like an assistant to that guy if we did super bowl next year i, I don't care what y'all say but i doubt it you know what i'm saying these guys are elite at what they do so again on one side it's a great thing because we we have so many great candidates to choose from but at the same time i guess the negative to it would be that none of these guys are gonna want to play second fiddle to the other I mean, if we do end up bringing in an assistant GM, I doubt it's going to be one of these guys. It's probably going to be the next like little prodigy guy that's just looking for his opportunity. I don't think any of these guys are going to make a lateral move from being assistant GM where they are currently to being an assistant GM here. I just don't see that. So just to give you all the heads up there. Also, I found it funny. My boy Hump2x on Twitter said the commanders have a better basketball front office than the Wizards even have, which is absolutely hilarious because it might be true. Bob Myers? Come on, dog. Josh Harris, Magic Johnson, stop playing, man. And so also, before we get up out of here, I want to talk about why us? Why are all of these elite minds, potential GM candidates, head of football operations, whatever you want to call them, just elite smart people? Why would these guys want to come to us? Why does it look like right now with the way that these interviews are coming in and how we're basically the loudest team have right now in the offseason? We're we're having the loudest offseason right now out of anybody. The most fun, at least, to kick it off already. Why are all of these guys wanting to come to us right now? Well, first of all, if you're looking at draft power rankings, when you're looking at draft value, um, and this is, comes from the Harvard Sports Analysis Collective, which is... You know, some people that we spoke about, some Harvard grads that we talked about in this video, some of their same models from the same school. We are second in draft power rankings. The only team ahead of us are the Cardinals because they just have so many mid-round picks. The Bears have the first and ninth pick in this draft, two top nine picks in this draft, and they're still behind us in third place. But we're second. With The, the Cardinals have a value of 1,497.4. We're second with a value of 1,236. And then you have the Chicago Bears third with 1,150. 4.2 so there you go right there just draft alone but also again like i already said earlier the dmv football market should be top five it's a sleeping giant we just need the right front office and right coaching staff and the right football players to come in here and start winning do everything the right way and i'm telling you i promise you the dmv will be up there in the same light as like new york la atlanta miami all these play i mean look at the this is in miami Josh Harris bought a house here for a reason. We need to get the DMV to that point. Uh, and also the draft capital, like I just spoke on. And then the cap space. We're number one in cap space. And I already did a full 30-minute breakdown on how we can become get even more cap space than we already currently have. We're somewhere in the 80 millions. We could get up to like 120 million if you really, really want to. And so this, this new group is also very hungry. They're very experienced in different avenues. They have a lot of connections. I mean, Bob Myers, his collections dating back to him just being an NFL agent alone is huge because he shook hands with everybody, man. I'm telling y'all, this is the gig that the best of the best want to be a part of. I'm telling y'all that right now. We have every reason to be extremely optimistic as Commanders fans moving forward. We may not be Super Bowl contenders this immediate next 2024 season, but I promise y'all within the next couple of years, we're going to be a tough team to deal with. I promise y'all that. With the way we're doing things, the right way from the ground up, we may honestly move our way into being if not the best, one of the best front offices and coaching staffs in the NFL, and I'm super excited. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm that subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get a notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. If you enjoyed this video, if you enjoyed the deep research, if you enjoyed the humor, all of that stuff, the personality, everything, make sure you stay tuned because again, I'm updating y'all on every little thing, Commanders. Like the Commanders have we now know our 2024 opponents i'm working on that video but i'm getting so backed up with other things that i haven't gotten a chance to put that video together because i'm not just gonna announce who our opponents are i'm gonna do a breakdown of who i feel like it's very early 
pre-free agency, pre-draft, before we even have a head coach or a GM or a defensive coordinator, we're going to go down this list and see like who we think we can beat and maybe even try to just do a super way too early schedule and record prediction or something like that. We'll see. So it's just so many small things like that that I'm working on, but I just keep getting backed up with more and more information, more and more news. I'm working on a mock draft. I have two mock drafts in the works. I have one mock draft where we trade back and still get a pretty good quarterback. And then I have another mock draft where I have us trading up to get Caleb Williams because and I'm gonna talk about it in that video there are some signs that show that we may actually want to be very aggressive and potentially trade up to get him if we can if the Bears are even listening so and then I'm also going to talk about in that video why the Bears may actually potentially potentially listen to some trade offers for that number one overall pick and how there are reports saying that they actually probably will not gonna dive into that right now again stay tuned for that mock draft I have so many videos everything so stay tuned i appreciate y'all just stay patient with me i'm probably gonna do like two three videos it's the second one i'm probably gonna do a third one later and man it's i'm i'm just i'm everywhere right now i'm sorry i'm speechless i got so much work to do so i appreciate y'all just stay patient with me catch y'all later i'm out